Hello, and welcome to the Google Flights Guide. This is going to be a six-part series teaching you how to leverage Google Flights and help you travel for less. My name is Jeremy Chesney. I'm a contributing writer at the Boarding Area blog, Point Me to the Plane, and a co-host on the podcast, Travel Tales from the Hashtag Nerdbirds. I'm a Google Flights expert who has had significant success using the tool to make my travel dreams become a reality, and I can't wait to show you how to do the same. So in this series, we're going to be talking about Google Flights Basics. That's episode one today. Episode two will be about using filters, best practices, so you can ensure that you're getting the best flights that meet your needs. Episode three, we're going to be talking about price tracking tips. So if you've ever asked yourself, should I buy now or wait, make sure you stay tuned for episode three. Episode four will be about the Explore tool, which is perfect for those of you who don't care where you go, but have a set budget for your trip. Episode five, we'll be diving into the more advanced topics for those of you who already have a good foundational understanding of how to use Google Flights. Finally, in episode six, we'll be discussing Google Hotels and Packages, which do have some useful tools to make your travel more affordable. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about search types, one-way, round-trip, multi-city, and what's important to consider with each of those, understanding the dates, which might sound strange, but I assure you once we get into the content, you'll understand. And we'll be talking about choosing the flights and what does Google tell you about those flights. They have a significant amount of information that can inform your purchasing decisions. And finally, how do we book using Google Flights? Now, without further ado, let's get to it. Now, our first step is to go to flights.google.com, which is going to open a page that looks like this. To start off, we're going to go really simple, and we're going to look at a one-way flight from Phoenix to New York. The first thing you can see here is that I'm allowed to decipher between choosing New York all airports, that is if I don't mind any of these, or I can choose a specific one if I have a preference. Since I don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and select New York. We're going to go ahead and take a look at a random date. Let's go with October 10th. It looks very affordable that day, along with most days in the month. It's very nice to be able to look at all of the prices at a glance. Once we select October 10th, the process is extremely fast. Already, we have a great list of flights that we can choose from. Google decides what the best flights are based on price, the speed, on-time percentages, and a bunch of other factors to help you choose the best flight for you. Obviously, the best flight in this case is going to be an American Airlines flight to Newark. That's the cheapest. But we also have great options to JFK or a United Airlines flight to Newark as well. So if we proceed with the American Airlines one, let's take a look at all the information that Google Flights gives us. To start off by just selecting the carrot here, we can get a great breakdown of all of the information about the flight, including when it departs, when it arrives, the aircraft type, flight number, legroom, Wi-Fi, power, and in-flight entertainment. And the other great thing about Google Flights is that they make the distinction between basic eco economy and main cabin flights. And they also break down exactly what that means for each case. And the best part is that it includes the package allowance. So you'll never book something through Google Flights and not really know what baggage is included. To actually proceed with the booking, it's quite simple. At the bottom, it'll show booking options. You just go ahead and select it, and it'll redirect you to the airline's website or an online travel agent to make your booking. Now here again, it's going to show the distinctions between basic economy and main cabin. While Google Flights is very good at picking up on the most accurate information from the carrier, it's always helpful to review this once again to ensure you're getting the best price and the best uh, flight for your needs. Now if we go back, we're going to take a look at a round trip booking. Again, we can open the calendar and we can see the prices for a whole host of different dates. But what is important to understand is that right now, it's showing prices in USD for four-day trips, which means that any of these given dates is showing how much it'll cost for a four-day round trip. We can adjust this if we'd like to five days, which is going to show different prices all around. The other option we have is to choose our departure date. So if I've already decided I need to leave on the 10th, now it's going to override the four-day requirement, and it's just going to show how much it'll cost to return on any of these given dates. 
It looks like the 10th to 14th is still the cheapest, so we can proceed with that. Once again, the process is already completed in the blink of an eye, so we can just select the flights that we want. It looks like Newark to Phoenix, again, is the best option. And here we go. We have the same exact readout, the same exact information, including legroom, Wi-Fi, power, in-flight entertainment, as well as the distinctions between basic economy and main cabin. The final thing we're going to look at is how to do a multi-city trip. So let's say I want to fly from Phoenix to New York, and then I'd like to fly from Washington Dulles Airport back to Phoenix on the 14th. The prices are a bit steeper in this case, it looks like, but once we select our outbound from Phoenix to Newark, you can see that all the flights returning back to Phoenix are departing from Dulles Airport. Now, this one does require a connection, but it's important to note just how easy and useful it is to be able to look at open jaw multi city tickets like this one. Now the one drawback with using the multi-city search tool in Google Flights is the fact that if we're trying to change the dates, we don't get the at-a-glance prices like we did with one-way and round-trip bookings. That means that if we're flexible and just need the lowest price possible, we're going to have to manually toggle and change each individual date. Overall, especially with domestic trips, it's more common that the uh, flight prices are based on one-ways, which means that if you were to separate this and look at Phoenix to New York as a one-way, and then look at Washington Dulles to Phoenix as another one-way, you're going to end up getting the same price. So with those cases, I would just recommend going that way because it'll allow you to see the prices uh, much easier. Now, thank you so much for watching episode one, where we talked about the Google Flights interface how to price one-way, round-trip, and multi-city flights. We'll see you next time on episode two for filters, which are going to be a great tool for you to use to make sure you're getting the exact flights at the exact times that you need. Make sure to go ahead and give a like and subscribe down below, and always feel free to reach out if there's anything I can do to help make your travel dreams become a reality. Mm -hmm.